Thanks for joining us here on this Thursday at noon. I'm Brooke Hash. It is the first day of the Kentucky State Fair, which kicked off this morning with the commodity breakfast, followed by the governor's official remarks as the gates open to the public. Our Jim Stratman is out there right now. It has been a busy morning already, and we are just beginning that lunch rush. That's right, Brooke, and you can see behind me maybe one or two people making their way to one of these uh, stands that you see everywhere out here on the fairgrounds. This is the 120th State Fair, and it was kicked off in style today, celebrating all 120 counties. That is the big theme this year, 120 counties, 120 years of the State Fair. And it was, you got to see that really on display during the opening ceremonies this year. You got to see uh, pageant queens from each county of the state on hand to cut the ribbon, signifying the start of this milestone fair. And the governor gave his remarks as well, telling the crowd that his favorite part of the fair every single year is the memories that he ends up making. And in fact, this is an, there's an exhibit on the state fairgrounds this year specifically designated for those memories, talking all about the different counties in Kentucky and memories from the state fairs for each and every one of them. The governor said that this is the perfect chance to make more memories. Folks, we've been through some tough times. We've been through a pandemic, tornadoes, floods, more tornadoes, more floods. And what I know after losing far too many people in these last couple of years is that our job is to do good things and to be kind to each other. And we see that every single day here at the State Fair. Now, the morning, as you mentioned, Brooke, kicked off with the commodity breakfast, as it does every single year. And the headliner of that event, obviously, it's going to be the Junior Country Ham Auction, which capped off this morning's event, raising $20,500 in scholarship money for Kentucky students. Now, the fair, as you can see, fully open. It opened up at 10 o'clock this morning, and it is going to be a whirlwind of the next 10 days out here at the fairgrounds. Lots of different events. We'll have all of that on our website so you can make sure you know exactly where and when to come out to the fair. Brooke, it is a fun atmosphere already today. All right, Jen, we are looking forward to it. We've got all the details with the ticket prices, parking, and everything in between. With the Kentucky State Fair Guide, just text FAIR to the number there on your screen, 582-7290, and we'll send a link directly to your phone. And if you are going to the fair today, get ready for a hot one. Temperatures will be soaring well into the upper 80s this afternoon, maybe even hitting into the 90s, Christina. Yeah, we're well on our way already, Brooke. Uh, we just now hit the middle 80s right now at Muhammad Ali International Airport for us. So everybody's feeling a little bit of that heat this afternoon. We'll continue, of course, to warm things up over the next couple of hours. We're clocking in 82 Bowman, uh, Bowman Field, E-Town, and over in Jasper. Next couple of hours, I do think we'll eventually top out at about 89, 90 degrees, but those clouds uh, are at least helping for the time being. We also have a shot at seeing some showers here in the next couple of hours, but you notice on this radar loop off to our west, the storms are absolutely falling apart as they move into uh, western Indiana as we speak, continuing to lose all of that strength that it once had over in Illinois. And I do think we'll continue that trend into the next couple of hours. Nonetheless, though, may still briefly get some rain around the Jasper area here in the next 35 to 40 minutes. If it does continue its trek uh, towards 65, likely to see it right after about 2 o'clock this afternoon, but still not thinking it's going to be a day ruiner. But of course, if you do hear that thunder, you want to make sure that you get to shelter if you are headed out to the Kentucky State Fair. As we move along on Futurecast, though, the main event going to arrive for tomorrow morning, and some of those storms could be on the strong to potentially severe side. So I'll walk you through that timeline coming up here in just a bit, Brooke. Christina, thank you. We've learned the names of the two men who died in a late night shooting in the Highlands over the weekend. The Jefferson County Coroner identified 20 year old Michael Batchelor Jr. and 29 year old Monte Wade as the victims in a triple shooting on Baxter Avenue. It happened before 2 a.m. Sunday morning near a couple of bars in the area. Police said the third victim is expected to survive. Today marks one full week since JCPS went back to school with a new transportation plan, and so far those bus drop-off times have improved significantly. But now we're dealing with much longer car rider lines wrapping around schools and into neighborhoods. Our Taylor Woods and photojournalist Elijah McKenzie visited with JCPS families to see if these lines are improving. Almost one week since school opened for JCPS. Parents say it's now time for them to do something about this. Long car lines wrapped around buildings stretching into neighborhoods. From day one, it's done a lot better, don't get me wrong. 
Uh, I wish it could improve a little bit more. Chris Medina, a parent, says the traffic jam on Hess Lane at Audubon Elementary was not the best on the first day of school. With two kids all day, dropping them off, picking them up, I was in my car for at least four and a half hours. JCPS told us this week Audubon Elementary is a school without a crossing guard. Families dropping off and picking up have been taking cues and directions from staff in the parking lot. So right now in the afternoons, picking up two kids, I'm about two hours right now. Like Medina, Henry Ford Jr. is not too pleased with how the lines are going. I didn't leave here till 415, and so that's ridiculous. Ford is a grandparent who has teamed up with another family to carpool. Basically, they take and I pick up, uh, but gosh, the first couple of days. So far, he says Wednesday afternoon has been the smoothest, but he's looking for a better solution. Ford says stipends are nice, but it's not enough. That helps, but that doesn't, you know, I just assume they keep their money and solve the problem. Ford wants the district to do something soon. Get it fixed. Get it fixed. Hoping the lines will get better. In Louisville, Taylor Woods, WHAS 11 on your side. Now another problem area for parents at Schaffner Traditional Elementary School in Crumbs Lane. Families told us they've been facing those long wait times too, sometimes well over an hour to pick up their kids while on that narrow road. And in an email from the school posted to social media, parents were told they could not park on Crumbs Lane. The school saying it was a reminder from Shively Police. That led many parents to worry they might be ticketed waiting for pickup. Well, we spoke to Shively. They sent us a statement saying we have no desire to punish parents of children for issues outside of their control. Our department will not ticket parents unless there is a safety issue or their actions are causing property damage. JCPS said it is evaluating those car lines at all schools and has already seen improvements. The district added resolving all issues will take time and asks for patience as it adjusts with the traffic patterns. This is direct legislative interference directly to the school board. It is a fight over control in Jefferson County Public Schools hitting the Kentucky Supreme Court with strong words from one of the justices calling Senate Bill 1 legislative interference. The bill limits the power of the JCPS school board and a challenge to it was heard in court yesterday. It is a complicated case, so here are three things that you should know. Senate Bill 1 would take power away from the board and give it to the superintendent. The district filed a lawsuit saying that way the bill is written. It's unconstitutionally targeting JCPS and Kentucky's Constitution prevents special legislation where laws only apply to one entity. Attorney General Russell Coleman and the attorneys for the JCPS school board argued their sides to the Kentucky Supreme Court. The attorney for JCPS said the court has already addressed this. The delegates to the Constitutional Convention actually considered a carve out especially to allow special legislation for Louisville schools, exactly the kind of law we're challenging today, and they specifically said no. JCPS attorneys argued board members are elected by the people, and this bill is taking away power from those chosen by the people of Jefferson County. Here's the attorney general office's response. Yes, he has independent authority, but the board gets to judge whether they like how he exercised that independent authority. So there is definitely still accountability to the people of, uh, of Jefferson County. The attorney general's office argued this bill makes the superintendent more like the CEO of JCPS. He went on to say the General Assembly wants the buck to stop with the superintendent. The high court will rule at a later date.